We're to drink extra, extra water during Pisces season, you guys. Really anchor in the, the earthly energies of water. Water is heavy, it's detoxifying, it's a living crystal. It's like the most healing element that we can uh, work with. And it's extremely important to be drinking a lot of really, really good water. If you could drink alkaline water, perfect. It tastes delicious. <laughs> okay, so let's bring out, we get it, we're getting into the tarot here. So let's bring this guy out. Remember what we're doing. Um, and remember your number and your element. Remember, tech is also an element now. What your soul wants you to know, what we're dealing with and, and need to focus on. Um, and our program ish, issue trigger to overcome or heal from. So the top we have mind, body, energy um, is spirit. It's like spirit, what our soul wants us to know. We'll have um, six cards in the center, what we are dealing with and need to focus on. Then we'll have our program issue trigger and to overcome or heal being on the bottom. I shall put you there for right now. Okie dokie. Now let's see which tarot um, deck we're going to start with because quite frankly I do not know. All of it is a mystery to me and I'm just long for the ride. Okay, so let's get these four decks here. We've got our Shadowscapes, uh, un the, sorry, the Wild Unknown, almost said the Untamed, the Wild Unknown, the Toth Tarot, and the Hermetic Tarot. Let's start here with the Wild Unknown. Are we starting? Is it, basically, is this going to be our base, what our base is for the read? not so our base is not the wild unknown is our base the shadowscapes shadowscapes our base shadowscapes our base thought it was gonna go yesterday oh oh my gosh excuse me Okay, guess not. <laughs> is Toast Tarot our base? Okay, that must leave our Hermetic Tarot for base. Is the Hermetic Tarot our base? Yes, look at that. Starting to go, doing its thing. You know, it'll start to move so drastically that, oh, there goes the beep again, shiny, um, that it'll move my arm. So it might look like sometimes it's my arm. It's like, no, it's the weight of it moving my arm. <laughs> it's really funny how that might come off, but yeah. Okay, so, wow. So this is a really, really, um, push this deck again. <laughs> serious it's serious it's a serious deck um it's all it's an all black and white and it is part it's the cabal like the, like we talked about hermetic tarot um it's what all the all the other tarot is based on on this and people might argue that and go we don't know what it's all based on yeah it, it's this okay that's that's it if you line everything up with with the uh with the tree of life it's perfect in its structure so there's no coincidence between the Kabbalah, the tree of life, and the, uh, the tarot. Um, people, you know, a lot of times it's like, oh, it came from the, uh, you know, playing cards or whatever. Well, where did the playing cards come from? Um, it, it's, it's, you know, whatever. But, whoops. Uh, but it is a very serious um, uh, deck. Last year, uh, right before the pandemic um, is, or a few couple months before, I have to look exactly when I got this deck, but I got it maybe six months before the pandemic and to, you know, to get, I was guided to, you know, really understand all this stuff much deeper. And um, so that's when I got the book and I got this deck. I got the, the Toth Tarot, which is same, 
um, slightly, slightly a little bit different, but um, because it's just a different person's interpretation of that's why. But um, any 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 tarot is a derivative of whether it, it it's seen that way or not. It, it is what it is. So anyway, so then at the beginning of last year, before the pandemic actually hit hit. I think it was probably just the beginnings of what was going on in uh, China. I did a read and I had 22 cards come out all in reverse. And there was many uh, major arcana cards and trump cards and it was just like, and then like sets of this of very similar of the same numbers from different from the different uh, elements. It was just like, what is this? This is what is going to happen? It's so crazy. And then the pandemic. <laughs> so yeah, 22 cards upside down in reverse. So let's see what we get here. First, we're going to get what our soul wants us to know. Our spirit, our spirit um, uh, point of our star, of our five-pointed five star. What spirit um, wants us to know. Let's go um, first, we'll go mind with our mind card, whoa, the emperor, and four of swords for body, whoa, <laughs> the emperor, our first card is the emperor, son of the morning, S-O-N, and four of swords, lord of the Lord of rest from strife, four of swords. So that would be our body card. Whoa. So again, this is the Hermetic Tarot by um, uh, Jeffrey Do Dodson, G-E-O-F-R-E-Y-D-O-D-S-O-N is his name. If you want to look these up and play along at home family, so you can really see what these, um, what these, uh, okay. So we can really see what, so you can really see what these cards are. Next card is two of swords, Lord of peace restored. Uh, two of swords here for energy, for energy, for energy spot. Okay. So our three cards under spirit, what spirit, what our soul wants us to know about mind, body, and energy. We have the emperor, four of swords, and two of swords. Awesome. Put this card back, I'm being told, and we are going to pick our fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth cards. Air, water, tech, earth, fire, and animal instincts. Air. Knight of Swords, Lord of the Winds and Breezes for our air card. Well, wow, Lord of the <laughs> It's a little on point in it. Lord, uh, sorry, Knight of Swords for Lord of the Winds and Breezes for our air position. For our water position, we have King of Swords, Prince of the Chariots of the Winds, in our water position, so wow, our our knight of swords, so heavy on swords here. Interesting, interesting for divine masculine. King of swords, prince of the chariots of the winds. Okay, so that's our air, our water, our tech card is five of cups. Lord of loss in pleasure. And we're, it did come out in reverse, but I'm being told to um, heads up here. Five of cups. Lord of the loss of pleasure. So take a look at that. That is tech. And then we have earth with seven of swords, more swords family. Lord of unstable effort with earth. Now remember, this is our first, our base, our base uh, layer here, first layer, 
Board of Unstable Effort will get uh, qualifiers, clarifiers as we go. Whew. More swords. Lord of Unstable Effort with Seven of Swords here for our Earth sign, for our Earth position, I should say. Fire. We have Ten of Wands with Fire, Lord of Oppression. Lord of Oppression right there with that Ten of Swords. That's what that card is known for in the Hermetic Tarot here. And um, nine, we have eight of cups. So our nine animal instincts is Lord of Abandoned Success. For our animal instincts position, Lord of Abandoned Success. Interesting. And lastly, our program issue trigger to overcome in our 10 position is the blasted tower or the tower, the Lord of the uh, Lord of the hosts of the mighty. Whoa, 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 for our 10 position here. Our program issue trigger to overcome to release to heal from. Wow, okay. So first things first that I, I can move these cards. All here. <laughs> They're like in my way, not moving. Okay. Um so let's take a look here. So the emperor coming up first in with the mind, what your soul wants you to know, mind with the emperor, son of the morning card, the emperor coming out number one. And just so you know, lately the emperor card has been feeling very Archangel Michael, very Archangel Michael. Um, we'll see what we get on top of that, but sometimes it's even more emperor or king or something like that to really like drive that energy home. Like, yep, it's me. I'm here. Um, so interesting. Our soul wants us to know with our mind, emperor energy, interesting, divine masculine, but also feeling that it's like, yes, divine masculine emperor. I mean, how much more, you know, in our mind about it can we be if we're looking at it on a very, you know, uh, literal, I guess, literally, I guess, um, but also saying with our mind, thinking of emperor in a new station that like, Archangel Michael, angelic, divine energy over, over things with your soul. Your soul, if you're a light worker in any way, whether you're a star seed or you identify as an earth angel or a fae or whatever, Archangel Michael is just like across the board there because you're a human incarnate on a mission in this lifetime. And Archangel Michael is, uh, is playing in every with everybody as to really try to help us um right like he was he came through here before remember um he was the i think our second card that came out if i'm if i remember i know he wasn't the first but remember you are safe with archangel michael so here we are again with that with that energy in the angel tarot it is actually archangel michael as the emperor in the the angel tarot um by doreen virtue so there's something very it's not just like i associate it because it's very literally that's what it is um as well as he's confirmed it for me um, then four of swords with body, Lord of rest from strife. So, uh, I'm hearing the, uh, the queen of owls coming in saying, uh, very much about body here, body energy, same thing as we're, you know, going into this, um, saying soul wants you to know healing, healing, they, that it's not all about pills in the hospital, that there's more to healing and it comes from within, like we talked about. So she's really coming through there. Um, so they're like, they're going, yeah, here, yeah, here. And then three with energy, um, soul wants us to know about energy, Lord of peace restored, 
Lord of Peace Restore. Gotta love that with the um with the two of swords, Lord of Peace Restored here. Um Well, shit, you know, working with Michael and working with the the Queen of, of Owls in the way, like him guiding you to that healing is basically what I'm saying. We'll have your peace restored. Your soul wants you to know. Working with your angelics, working with your guardian angels, archangels to be led to how to be healed will have your energy restored. If your energy was restored, it makes everything so much better. So, okay, there we go. That's simple. Seems simple. We'll get more. We'll get more. But Lord of the Winds of Breeze is coming with the, with this four spot here with, and I thought that was on point, but we have the king um, anchoring both sides here with air and water. Um, so a lot of air energy, a lot of, again, like air energy is very, um, you know, in the head, in the mind, a lot like thinking and all that stuff, right? So um, makes sense for divine masculine energy stuff for us, what we are dealing with, what we need focus on. So Lord of the Winds and Breezes, Prince of the Chariot of the Winds. Um, okay. And then six with tech, Lord of Loss of Pleasure. Seven with earth, Lord of unstable effort with Lord of unstable effort with earth, fire, Lord of oppression with fire with those 10 of wands. That is fire. It's a lot of fire. Um, and then nine with uh, our animal instincts is abandoned success. Abandoned success is interesting because um overnight one of the one of the big things that i thought it or that came to me about needing to do a meditation and healing on is fear of abandonment so we've covered all these other bases recently with um, the meditations that i've been guided to do healing the inner child body love um, money wounds fears and stuff like that but abandonment wasn't isn't wasn't part of, of the that 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 set those four so um it's going to be coming up also procrastination the truth um different ones we've already been downloading information that i'm going to be doing um coming very soon this month okay so i'm being told let us look up into our book here getting into for air the i'm not going to read the whole thing but knight of swords and it's our aces then we'll have it's kind of weird the way this is set up it's just going to be hard for me to find it's hard for me to find with this book um oh come on the kings okay there's the kings the cups it's just weird aces the court cards well those are the cards that i want why can't i see sorry please bear with me i forgot what a kind of a bitch this is with this book to find stuff. It's like kings, twos, threes, queens. It's just odd the way that it's, it's, I mean, it goes by the, the way that um, the tree is set up, but it's just not very intuitive. Okay, here we go. Sheesh. Um, okay. Prince of Swords, Prince of the Chariots of the Winds, Prince, uh, Prince and Emperor of Sylphs and Syphilides, last deacon of Capricorn, first two deacons of Aquarius, the Prince of Swords of, in air, of air, specific air of primal air. This is significant Yasad moon symbolism here in that this is a card of mind. The dual fairies of the golden dawn the dual fairies of the golden dawn card and the three winged uh, children of Crowley's card suggest that like 
the mind itself, the chariot may be pulled capriciously in any direction, like we were talking about before. Um, in the right hand of the prince is the sword which invokes cre and creates, but in his left is the sickle which immediately destroys that which is created. In the Golden Dawn card, the repeated pentagrams are a reference of the sword of Gebera, but as the prince is crushed in the child's head with the pentagram on its forehead, we are told here that this prince wields the sword with child with childlike innocence. This is an extension of the same symbolism found with the queen of swords. Okay, so there we go. Um, it's a little different because like I said, uh, I was guided to this deck in this book and this book doesn't go with this deck, but because it's all part of the same thing, it means the same thing. This, this book um, highlights four different deaths. And if you heard, it said Crowley. So it actually highlights this other deck that I have, the Crowley, the Crowley Tooth Tarot. So, uh, which is, like I said, the exact same thing. So this book, has all these cards in it but when i got this deck i was told to get this book when i got that deck i was told to get this book which is the actual which is a companion book that was that was that goes with that book with that deck so anyway there you go so um <laughs> now that's understood so we're talking so it's interesting so that air that air is it's connected to the moon so we just had our moon the moon being very very oh, i'm gonna keep this the moon being very um potent and important energies coming into this month as i talked about in the beginning so um yeah <sighs> talking about that child so it was that like naughtiness thing I'm, I'm feeling that her the um the fairy of naughtiness coming through and talking about that childlike innocence of of let's build something <laughs> let's destroy it you know kind of thing um very interesting so speaking more to uh more to allowing for uh inner inner exploration outer exploration that sort of thing okay let's go let's go directly to the king of swords i'm stealing king of swords back here with our kings coming back to me how this whole thing works <laughs> how this book works and it's just hard to explain it but if you actually have the book and see how it's laid out it does make sense um i just saw it okay here we go he the kings the four kings are figures mounted on steeds golden dawn and crowley versions represent the yod forces in the name of each suit um the radix father and commencement of material forces, a force in which all the others are implied and of which they form the development and completion, a force swift and violent in action, but whose effect soon passes away and therefore symbolized by the figure on a steed uh, riding swiftly and clothed in complex armor. Um, <laughs> it's really funny. Okay, so here we go, King of Swords, Lord of the Winds and Breezes, King of the Spirit of Air, King of Sylphs and Syphilites, the last deacon of Taurus, first two deacons of Gemini. The King of Swords is specific fire in primal air. Wait. 
Oh, I lost my place. That didn't make any sense there for a second. I'm like, what am I reading? I just heard red air and now I'm reading water. Sorry, I totally lost my, my, my spot here. The King of Swords is specific fire in primal air. It is a personification of the activating force behind the world of astral images and ideas. It is a violent and, ag and aggressively cutting power um, an idea shown best by Crowley and not at all by the weight and Marcellus cards. Crowley's mounted king is the dynamic energy of the charging bull of Taurus, but being predominantly Gemini, he turns easily in one direction or the other. Yeah, the twins, this or that. Gemini is also implied in the Golden Dawn King's crest, the hexagram, which is merging of opposites. To this king is attributed the subtleness and craftiness of as air refers to the conscious mind. The subtleness and craftiness of the conscious mind and the ability to go in both directions. And that is water. This is our water position with our king of swords. So what was just described again won't be this card because we're reading from a different thing, but I like the way that it's that they that he describes like what that means on this like deeper level. So <clears throat> so with water with our water point, um, the personification of the force behind the astral images and ideas. So this is like saying we're having really intense images and ideas from astral, our third, our third eye. We need to think about water helping us with this because um, that's our water position. Um, and it's very intense with the fire and the air, but also going in both directions, which makes sense with this water position. Okay. Um, Five of Cups with text is up next, but what I'm going to do is take a little pause here. I'll be right back. Got to close some windows because it has gotten dark. We've been here for a little bit. We'll be right back. Alrighty, we're back. And I've been gone longer than just a minute because amongst other things, I decided to save some time and go through the book and get our page numbers so um, we can go through this quicker. Um, but I am being guided to, to really read from the book for these. So without further ado, let's jump into the next card, Five of Swords. And that is for our, um, uh, our tech. Yes, our tech position is our five, oh, sorry, five of cups is our tech position and that is page 87 here. Um, oh, actually I want to back up here and just quickly talk about the fives. There's this whole longer thing about the fives, but this is um, just a smaller, a smaller, just snapshot of it says the fives opposition strife struggle war obstacle to the thing in hand ultimate success or failure and is otherwise shown so really polarized energies there with the five of uh or with the fives um and it says the fives bring serious problems into all areas symbolized by the elements to uh to wands energy the fives bring quarrel and strife to cups, love and friendship. The fives bring the destruction of relationships to swords, sickness and trouble. They bring certain defeat in a given matter and to pentacles, business and money. They bring material hardship. Yet success or failure is shown by other cards in a divination. The five simply announce that a difficulty exists. So again, this is our tech position. Um, with the Five of Swords, Lord of Defeat, Venus and Aquarius, and, uh, um, and they each are attribute um, angels. So this is Angels of the Deacon, Aniel and Shamia. Okay, so this is Gebra and Yetzra, the influence of Gebra um, in the astral world. This card, and if you don't know what these mean, it's okay. Just that's what they're called. If you want to look them up, you can. I could just go from like branch to branch to branch to branch, just keep getting deeper and deeper if I keep like 
explaining certain things. You don't have to necessarily know this is just positions on the tree of life is basically what this is. Um, and since I don't even like, I don't, I'm still learning this stuff too. So anyway, so we'll just continue here. Um, this, okay, it says, uh, da, 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 let me start at the beginning. This is Gebra and Yetzra, the influence of Gebra in the astral world. This card with the nine and 10 swords is, uh, is among the most destructive, along with the nine and 10 of swords, is amongst the most destructive in the deck. A relationship has already been noted between the sword of, of Gebra and the Rose of Venus, which is also the Rose of the Rose Cross the rose of the rose cross they are closely related energies mars being the consort of venus in mythology what we are shown in the golden dawn card is that when the sword of, of jebra sweeps through the air of yetzera the growth energies of venus are no match for it and the petals of the rose are scattered literally into the winds. Crowley's card shows the same dispersion of forces behind the swords of the in the shape of the inverted pentagram. Weight illustrates the divinatory meaning of the card, defeat, loss, failure, uh, contest, finish, and decided against the person. So let's take a look at our own card. Oh, oh shit, I was reading the wrong one. <laughs> Oh my God, I was reading swords and it's cups. I apologize. Well, we know about swords. We know about five of swords. Sorry. I, I was reading. Let's start over. Hello. We're going to do five of cups because it's five of cups, not five of swords. We have so many swords here. And for some reason, it, it, I didn't catch it sooner. So it was meant to be that we read about it. Maybe Five of Swords is going to come up soon. So we'll, we're already now. Um, this is Five of Swords. A bad shit have come in. Okay. Five of Cups, however, where tech is. I was like trying to think like, all right, I could see that like tech being a, you know, it's been very, could be very destructive. I'm like already like thinking about it. It's so funny. Okay. Five of Cups, Lord of Loss and Pleasure, Mars and Scorpio. Okay, this is Jebra in Bena, the influence of Jebra in the material world. Mars in the water sign Scorpio produces an extremely emotional effect. Loss of that which is loved is symbolized by the once full cups in the Golden Dawn and Crowley cards and by those overturned at the feet of weight solitary figure. The watery nature of this card is totally disconnected discontent with the fiery uh the watery nature of this card is totally uh disconsonant with the fiery nature of jebra and means of loss and pleasure this is also one of the cards which can mean death in the cards around it if the cards around it are supportive of this interpretation it may mean death of a loved one or the person themselves. One element of the Crowley card, which may seem peculiar, is the inverted pentagram associated with the devil and evil generally. It is used here to mean the triumph of matter over spirit. The triumph of matter over spirit. Okay, so there is our five of cups from the Hermetic Tarot. Lord of loss and pleasure. Okay, so this is coming to me really easily. Um, and it's different. It's different. It's like this is saying the source is saying bad things are coming. It's like um, a lot of conflict and stuff like that. And that's, and that's totally different from five of cups, even though there's discontentment and like loss or, or even death here that can mean um, the the five of cups and a couple of things like are coming to me like kind of like loss of the of just the 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 nap the original natural elements loss of just the the natural world before tech came into the picture so i kind of feel like that's part of it um but i also feel what was here um this oh associated with the devil and 
evil generally and the triumph of matter over spirit. So that's talking to talking about like people numbing out and just really like getting lost in technology and apps and social media and video games and things that really just are are meant to um, act like they are expanding the mind and working the mind and all these things but in reality they're limiting the mind because they're like these mental crutches that because the mind is seeking greater knowledge and understanding that those things that can be so robust visually and can really tap into our energetic body and get our you know heart pumping and we get really passionate so we can think like oh we're really living here and the case really truly is is that it's an illusion you're not actually doing anything but going through the motions it feels a certain way and it's and it's filling a certain cup but the bottom line is is that there's loss there there's loss of what's going on and that what needs what should be happening with the third eye and robust meditations and connections spiritually and working with your energetic body and all of these things that the soul is like super longing for us to connect to um uh technology has been used very efficiently to um really unbelievably destructively distract us from oh sorry puppy um from the uh the real world so it's an illusion kind of card really similar to the devil and, and yeah because that's what that's what the devil card is the devil card is about like fears and illusions and things like that um so that really makes sense with tech um, and the element of tech and and what we need to balance. So we need to look at divine uh, our divine masculine sides that kind of tend to be more addictive and more competitive with stuff, which a lot of things can be kind of competitive online, I guess you can say. Even social media can be very competitive, as you know, um, and just destructive in the sense of, of like fairness and you know what gets attention that really feeds the soul and what gets attention that's just bubblegum for the brain and visually stimulating or or get your adrenaline pumping or your you know your sex organs excited that that is a distracting element um in your world and if that feels out of, you can take a serious look at yourself and go, or, or it could be news. It could be YouTube videos. It could be just too much of, of any one of these things or all of them combined that equals these things are just, these things that are connected to tech are distracting me away from what's going on on the inside. I'm not using them for the betterment. They're becoming a detriment and a death to the ascension process. And in this time period that we're getting into with the divine masculine and divine feminine in March, in, um, in this time, in this Pisces season, this is really interesting about this five of cups coming in because water can be very destructive. So it's saying tech can be very destructive in our lives, very destructive in our lives. Um, it's great for connection in so many ways as Gaia goes into, but at the same time, those connections could be used for you know, evil, you know, it's like, I'm seeing like a rope, like a rope can be used to tie things together and build things and make things and help people like rescue them and all sorts of stuff, or you could tie a rope in a really covert way. And somebody could be, you know, driving by or whatever, and it completely like messes them up or just seeing like, like the same, like I always see like the same tools doing destructive and, and like, um, 
and creative things. So it's it's just really interesting <laughs> how that that's the card for that. Okay, so let's move on to our um, our seventh position, our Earth position, which is the Seven of Swords, which is page one hundred. Okay, so the sevens, the sevens generally show a force transcending the material plane and is like unto a crown, which is indeed powerful, but requireth one capable of wearing it. The sevens then show a positive result, which is dependent on the action when then taken. They depend much on the symbols that accompany them. Okay, so again, Seven of Swords, so I read the right one. <laughs> seven of Swords. Okay, Lord of Unstable Effort, Moon and Aquarius. Okay. And Angels of the Deacon, Michael and Hanny Hell. Okay, this is Netsack. Uh, yeah, Netsack in Yetzera. The influence of Netsack in the astral world. In the Golden Dawn card, the rose is restored for it is a symbol primary, primary to Venus who rules Netzach. And let me show you this card. Seven of Swords. Again, the Lord of Unstable Effort. Okay. I realized I didn't show you guys. But the swords are precariously balanced against it, aimed against the larger one of the sun. It is not entirely clear what is going on, particularly in the weight card, which is generally um, enigmatic. And that is the point. For the divin divination, this card means unstable effort, vacillation, and untrustworthy character. The moon in Aquarius indicates sociability, often religious inclination. The moon is less fluid and changeable here than, than in other positions. However, the balances with it, which it establishes, are precarious and easily upset. Whoopsie. Awesome tower. Um, okay, so so our Earth, the <laughs> Lord of Unstable Effort. So I'm just seeing this like it's funny. The se Seven of Swords, Lord of Unstable Effort. This is our seventh position with our Seven of Swords. Earth saying unstable effort. Like whatever's been going on here is getting like a shakeup, like literally like earthquaking shakeup. And, and depending on what it is that is unstable will affect the other things around it that's going on in your particular situation. Now, remember, this is what we are dealing with that we need to focus on to, to heal from or to fix in our lives, to get a handle on kind of thing. Um, so So I, what I'm seeing with this, at least so far, is just this uh, really divine masculine needing to look at what, what energies have been going into something that's unstable or what is unstable in your, in your life um, that's more foundational that if you could just be like, okay, I would change this because the energy is unstable or whatever is going on there that feels unstable to you. Um, it could be home life. It could be your job. It could be, you know, your relationship. It could be, it could be, it could be so many things that feel unstable that keep you kind of ungrounded and kind of like in a state of like, I can't settle. I can't just really ground and settle in with this thing, whatever this thing is. And you may have even, you may want to dig deep because I'm hearing you may feel like you may have gotten used to an unstable envir environment and you just sort of kind of, or an unstable situation and you or relationship. And you're just like, you've like 
decided that you're like hunkering down in it. So it's be, it's had the illusion of being stable when it's not, or you're just not super comfortable. That's another way to look at it. Like how comfortable are you? Not complacent, comfortable. And it's like, or did you become complacent because you had to, because it was uncomfortable? <laughs> and whatever that is to take a look at what else that's connected to, what else that's connected to and kind of see that and how that encompasses other things so we can work on making that more stable. Even if again, we've decided, oh, you know, I've made it, I've made it as nice, as pretty, as stable as it could possibly be. Um, but it still is uh, underneath, there's still an instability to it. What is that? Why is that? And what can we do about it? All right, next, eight of fire. I'm sorry, eight is the our fire side. Eight is our fire position. And that is our 10 of wands. Um, I wrote 10 of swords. I think I got all confused here. Really. <laughs> what was I thinking? Um, the 10, okay. No, we're good. 10 of, oh no, I did do. Oh no, I did write. I wrote, I wrote swords, but I wrote, but it was wands. Okay, because we are 10 of wands in our fire position. So fire, fire here, big time. Let's read about our 10 of, of um, our 10 of wands. Yeah, look at all that fire going on there. Very crisscross, but we have those two like pillars, those two pillar hook things, whatever those are in the center. So tens generally show fixed, accumulated, completed force, whether good or evil. The matter thoroughly and def def definitely determined. The matter thoroughly and definitely determined, like done deal. Similar to the force of nines, but ultim ultimating it and carrying it out. So really being done. Okay. So Ten of Wands, Lord of Oppression, Saturn in Sagittarius. Okay, this is McCullough in Adzalus, the influence of McCullough in the world of pure spirit. The destructive powers of Saturn are amplified by the swiftness of Sagittarius, leading to material force selfishly applied, usually with cruelty. Crowley shows the nature of the force by using wands, which are no longer elegant, but which rather are crude clubs. Wade's card usually uses a heavy burden to suggest cruelty and malice, overbearing force and energy, injustice, injustice. Interesting. So there's our fire, injustice. Huh. Okay. So our fire, fire position here with our eight card. So it's like judgment. Um, I'm hearing judgment on the self, just really fierce type of self judgment or even self doubt is what I'm hearing here. What we are just dealing with and need to focus on. Let's remember this cruelty, cruelty. Cruelty with the self, self-doubt, hearing feelings of abandonment, feelings of abandonment, or being abandoned, wounds of abandonment. So that I, I believe I brought it up earlier that we're to I'm to do a, an abandonment um, meditation for helping to heal the that that constant feeling of of a band of like things are not going to work it's like not going to work out or the person's going to bail or something's going to go for you know like it's going to be an ending because that's just what always happens kind of thing that's what fear of abandonment is about um i need another candle 
Oh, these all went, oopsie, these all went out over here. Oh, well, this one I really want more. The others are going to be Okay, so, huh. So needing to recognize energies when it comes to feelings of doubt, of second guessing of oneself, of feeling like something's just inevitably, inevitably going to go bad or south or end or whatever, or getting the feelings of being the one that, that leaves first or needing to leave. Um, before the other person does, or there being an imbalance, injustice, imbalance in um, give and take energies. This feels really heavy with like, uh, you know, like empath energy. This is uh, Saturn and Sagittarius. So it's like, it's an interesting blend when I think of like empath energy is like Saturn and Venus put together because it's like we quickly feel and we're so emotional about it, but because we're so sensitive, we can quickly like, like program into ourselves basically um, what doesn't, what we're, what we need to avoid but that can become such a, it can literally, instead of it being something that's a good thing for us, we can just program the need to avoid or for those, for, or for people that are, are come in or situations that do come in that need that, um, that aren't in resident that don't resonate at the same frequency with us that so will ultimately need to separate even if there's some illusion in the beginning that there is that that sameness um because of the actual programming into our into our frequency into our body into our energy that says that reinforces that it'll just like will either attract people that will eventually have that outcome or will or will feel that with with other people that like normally wouldn't just because it will like put weight on those on those triggers because they're already weighted all oh, those cells and the energy because it's already weighted so it'll trigger us to react or for things to react a certain way it's like it's like we don't recognize that that's the situation but it's like pheromones like you're not in, it's like you're not in control of your pheromones it's just it is what it is you can't even smell it so it's very similar to that and so what we need to do is like cut cords and heal from those um embedded programs that say that kind of reinforce that that abandonment or that ending needing to end because abandon like when you abandon something you end something so if we take it if we rewind it out what is abandonment abandonment is is the ending of it's letting go of but in a way that's not healthy because a lot of times you say let it go that's great that's also an abandonment thing to sort of you're abandoning those energies but it's a good it's a positive thing so it's like two sides of the same coin um, and, and we have in all, with all of us, we've been abandoned and we've done the abandoning and anybody who's like, oh, I've never abandoned anybody or anything. Bullshit. Yeah, yeah, you have. Yeah, you have. And you've been on both sides of that because it's the same energy and we have to, we have to work out and especially endings and beginnings is something that we're, is our, the basis of our creation. It's the law. It's like one of the first laws is what is created must be destroyed at some point to, to be created again. So it's like, um, it's just perpetuating that in a, in an unhealthy way. So we need to end that. And a lot of that is just like the inner, again, going back to the inner child or like that, like the first few times as a person, you feel rejection, you feel somebody let you down, you feel like I can't trust that they betrayal, like all of that 
is connected to abandonment. So <laughs> something that I think about there, do some inventory on both sides of that and whatever comes up for you, but stay tuned for the abandonment meditation. It's going to help a lot of that. Okay, next is um, animal instincts with our eight of cups. And that is on page 106. We are almost done here. Eight of Cups. Okay, so the eights generally show solitude, solitary success. Um, example, success in the matter for the time being, but not leading to much result apart from the thing itself. Okay. And that is our Eight of Cups. Our Eight of Cups. Lord of Abandoned Success, Saturn in Pisces this time. Uh, this is Hode in Brenna, the influence of Hode in the me mental world. Return in the water sign, sorry, Saturn in the water sign Pisces brings about subtle problems and, the, and a certain introspection which manifests as a sense of dis, disinterest with a material condition. This effect of water on Saturn is to produce discontent, the abandoned success or deadline of interest in anything, which this card means. This idea is shown by Waits figure, which walks away from the cups, again, leaving abandoning. So we have this twice here. So this is a big energy that, that the divine masculine is being um, asked to to work on clearly it keeps coming up here and it's been a theme that I've been um, seeing and so and again that's our animal instincts that makes perfect sense that that's that primal animal like like that that it's like oh god this makes so much sense it's like that the other side of abandonment is survival so when you're abandoned it's like well i survived this abandonment even if it's clear that obviously you will that like animal instinct level is like baby in the basket being left in the storm with nobody to take care of it you know kind of that makes me emotional <laughs> okay but that's what it's like i think that that on on the very and on the very very basic basic of like what we are in our core like when we're like little and born that animal you know that animal instinct of like you know, knowing nothing. It's like you need protection. You need to know that you're safe and cared for. And the abandonment thing leads to that survival thing, takes you back to, you know, not having any control in this like free fall feeling and not in a good way, not in that fool, you know, starting off great. Oh, this is awesome kind of way. This is just, just that like, that like baby in the cradle, like whatever that, that song is. It's so weird that it's like, it's like you're just like cradle and the tree or whatever I can't even think of it right now it's kind of disturbing but it's like kind of like that energy so it makes perfect sense that it's coming up with animal instincts because it's like that it's a different type of that abandonment issue that we we're just talking about that was like that's totally different than what this evokes. This evokes a very different type of abandonment energy even though it's all the same um yeah okay so let's so now that we've gone through that now the last one is program issue triggered to um overcome and heal and we get the blasted tower that known as the tower lord of the host of the mighty so there's the blasted tower and i like how i always you know pay attention here how there's the two tree the tree of life on either side the light and the dark we have the sun coming out with this intense energy we have um what's showing this divine masculine energy the tower being phallic being male and um uh, but what I always find very, very interesting is how it's just the top part of the tower that's like blown to bits, but the bottom half of the tower is always, always, always intact. So take a look, take a look at that. See that? And see this, see the two, 
the light and the dark uh, tree of life symbols. Okay, so that is uh, that is me didn't write the page down. Okay, I must have gotten distracted. So let's find the tower. That here is a little bit. One sixty five. It's actually in the index. Don't know why. Whatever. Okay, the tower, the sixteenth key, the the path of pay, P E H. Um, this is the twenty seventh path. Path color scarlet, related sound C natural, planet Mars, meaning mouth, double letter grace and indignation, um, esoteric title, the Lord of the host of the mighty. 32 paths of wisdom, the 27th path is the active or ex, um, ex, exciting, I don't know why I couldn't spit that out, active or exciting intelligence. And it is so called because though through it, Every existent being receives its spirit and notion. That is pretty heavy energy. Say hello to Blackie. Um, and it's just like several pages here. So let's just see here. I'll just start here at the beginning. Um, the path of pay, the tower connects the the center of the reasoning process with the center of the intuition, desire, nature. It is the equilibri equilibrating path of the personality related to Mars and to the North and the quarter known traditionally as the mysteries as the place of great darkness. Because it is said that the sun never shone in the North of Solomon's temple, um, wait, sorry. Oh, because it is said that the, that this sun never shone in the north in Solomon's temple with the the um, uh, with its placement. Okay. Yet we are instructed that light comes from darkness, that gold cometh from the north, and that enlightenment has its origin in the hidden sources of power, which terrify the minds of the ignorant. Uh, yeah. He is a double letter, meaning that it is one of the gateways of the soul, the two possible directions of passage. As the word pe means mouth, an orifice related both the taking of nourishment into the system and to speech. In the first case, we understand that it is through the function of this devastating um, path that the, wait, sure, yeah, devastating path that the higher energies are brought into uh, and ener enervate that personality. And while spiritual nourishment passes into the system via the symbolic mouth, speech passes out of it. Anyone who has done some practical esoteric work is aware of this singular importance of words and of the sounds of which these words are composed. The vibration of a God name its utterance is such a way that it can actually be felt in the body, has a definite effect on the physical vehicle as well as the uh, the concomitant concoming effect of the psychic vehicles of the energy. This is a fact easily tested by the student, although the effect on the psyche may not be completely perceived by the walking consciousness. Words of power probably vibrated with the Martian force help to bring about the destruction of our personal towers, false concepts, and institutions, which we believe to be reality. But it should be understood that to tear something down is to make room for something new. Mars may be a god of war and destruction, but it is also the god which rules over the fertility of crops. And relative to speech, we know that the Logos is also the word. 
Most versions of this key picture is a tower set in a desolate landscape being struck by lightning. Figures fall from it as the crown is struck off. In the most simple of terms, this symbolizes the sudden destruction of our perception of what constitutes reality. The tower is a concept of what most people call I, the personality awareness being shattered by the influx of force uh, revealing something of the nature of the higher self. The tower also symbolizes symbolizes all man-made institutions, whether that means government, religion, or any other accepted values. <sighs> Yet, this is not to be construed with the striking down of evil. In fact, one title of the card in the house is the house of God. The spiritual learning process involves the continual building up and striking down of concepts from only as useful stepping stones into an into the inner world. We talked about this earlier. The for example, on the paths of the first encounter of archangels in anthropomorpho morpho, anthropomorphic guise. This appears to be their reality, particularly if we may not have believed that archangels exist in the first place. What we encounter are our contact, whoops, contact. Uh, pictures which have been established through centuries of meditative practice. These are a useful creation of man rather than uh, being the true and pure consciousness of the arch archangelic beings. To encounter the archangels as formless consciousness means to destroy another tower which we have created, yet these towers are necessary and sacred. They are like the, uh, like the deepest expression of ourselves, our bodies, temples of the Holy Spirit. Appreciating this, we learn to apply the underlying principles of each path without being bound by their necessarily artificial outward manifestation. We know that any path we follow is, by definition, artificial, whether that be Kabbalah, Hinduism, Catholicism, Judaism, or Buddhism, and that each carefully laid brick of these structures will ultimately be destroyed. Oh, I could go on and on here, but I'm glad that I was guided to, it was, it's a big paragraph. I'm like, I'm not going to read this. So like, oh, yes, you are. Like, okay. And I understand why, you know, got into this whole thing with archangels, with Pete, which either it's really, it's really interesting. Either people are like fully in or people are just like, I cannot believe you believe in, you know, that fantasy shit angels. Um, unfortunately, because angels are just, um, expressions like the first expressions of mother father god and and are in charge of of really and that's why archangel michael he's like yep that's why i'm here archangel michael coming in in that first position of our mind taking in it's very it's very interesting archangel michael with the emperor coming in card number one what your soul wants you to know and then card number 10 coming in with the tower very um similar energies in the in the sense of of being here to to like affect change of the mind that your mind wants you to know this does exist and this tower and me reading this about the arch archangel saying this does exist these energies exist it's saying that our description our um interpretation artistically of what we show to be an angel or an archangel the the personification of that image with wings and a body and a face and all of that is what we impose upon what an archangel or an angel looks like. But the fact of the matter is, like he says here, is that it, they, they are pure energy. They're just pure energy. They're a little bit different from each other, but they're so close. They, they may as well be same, same, same. There's just many, many of them because there's so much and so many slices of the pie that needs that needs its own special kind of look at it. So mother, father, God just fractal themselves out their first, um, their first set of fractals to look over cre infinite creation that keeps going and going and creating and changing and evolving and even coming to a point of of having within the body structure of one of the most advanced living forms in creation which is mother gaia also evolving into having another element like technology and so it's about understanding that we have to keep 
um, like we talked about earlier, this like level up, it's like we take bricks from the bottom and put them on top. And so the bricks from the bottom don't exist anymore and they are destroyed to put the bricks on the top for us to climb higher. And so essentially we're de de deconstructing the tower over and over again as our, our perception of what is real, what we can connect to, what is, um, what is uh, part of the web that we're part of instead of being separate from. And so it's like, that's what we, it doesn't matter what religion we, we are born into or we gravitate to at some point, if you keep going higher and higher in your awareness and your light, enlightenment, you're gonna see no matter what it is, it's all gonna be destroyed because none of those tell the real story that is inside of you that you can discover um, on your own by destroying the tower again and again. Some of those things are good starting points. Some of them really put you behind the eight ball because you have to destruct, destruct, destruct those programs to get through it, um, definitely for sure. And so that's what it's saying here. What's the program? What's the issue? What's the trigger that we need to get, that we need to get over? The and the tower coming in to say, it's the, it's the, this little buggy, I tell you. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. It's so, it's just like right here. It just keeps like eyeball diving me right here. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, so basically, what it's saying is, uh, the resistance to the to the destruction of what we already think or we know what we know or what the stories we were told that we believed what we accepted and consumed to be real and true and whole because of who and what told it to us instead of what we discover for ourselves that we have to take a we have to backpedal and go okay, do I know this or was I told this? And what do I feel? Because now I'm moving up and things that are coming in, like the awareness of archangels in my world feels and resonates. And like, I feel that energy and that power, especially if you start getting further and further into connecting in these ways. And then, but then the bigger picture in a lot of ways are just like, ah, oh, that's not really a thing. It's just this, it's that, it's these stories. Like, like a lot of society and especially the intelligent people will say anybody who believes in angels and archangels who take any of this stuff seriously is a wackadoodle and and ridiculous and from that perspective sure because they they don't understand that their tower hasn't been destroyed um they haven't gotten they're they're still in their illusion of what they know to be real is to be real but there's so that they're like this tiny little ant living in a little in, in in one little speck of whatever going this is everything and you're just like uh-huh okay and that's like the truth of it and so it's just kind of it's just but slowly we deconstruct deconstruct and then the ant starts to recognize that its little perspective its tiny little itty bitty perspective is nothing compared to what reality actually is but it just takes time and layers to get through that understanding and still it's very difficult even the more aware and more and more because this reality is so is so it precise that it makes it hard to see beyond it that's why you literally have to tr make such an effort to disconnect from what is not real what is the illusion what is the material matrix disconnect from that and connect into what is known as the abundance matrix with gaia and what the the elements the natural even the tech being natural it's not about technology being advanced and unnatural it's about it's about what's connected to it and how it is used just like anything else okay so <laughs> There we have it. We've gone through the 10 cards. They are, um, this was awesome. It was long, but it was awesome. So if you stuck with it, if you've gone and come back, I appreciate you for doing that. Um, but we are going to, that's not it. Like we said, we had these other decks that we could, um, that we're going to uh, clarify and qualify.